Hello everyone, and welcome to another episode of Andy's Witchcraft by me, Sacred Moon. I hope you're all having a wonderful day so far, that you're enjoying the summertime. It's been rainy the past couple of weeks here, so I haven't had much time to enjoy the weather, but I personally like the rain, so I don't mind it too much. <laughs> Anyways, today's episode, I'm going to discuss 10 things that I wish I knew before jumping into witchcraft. And, uh, you know, I'm just going to put it out there that I obviously didn't know everything and I still don't know everything. And um, so there were a lot of things to learn and I was definitely patient enough to learn them. But there are definitely things I wish I knew before, you know, I did my first spell or bought my first tarot deck. And so uh, I figured I'd share this with you guys for any beginning, beginner witches out there. So let's get started, shall we? The first thing on my list is cultural appropriation and practices with racist roots. So for example, the division of magic into black or white has racist undertones, the historical significance, it's very much rooted in racism. Rituals that are commonly described as bad and therefore labeled black magic often come from traditions such as hoodoo, which is traditional uh, African folk magic. So it's not necessarily because, oh, black means black people. Like that's not really what the issue was. It's the issue with most of the things that they slapped the label of black magic came from African folk magic um, and other indigenous and Native American practices and practices that are close to people of color. Speaking of hoodoo and voodoo and all that, these are practices only open to descendants of slaves. Hoodoo is a sacred path preserved from black ancestors who escaped slavery and it is the knowledge they fought to keep within their families in secret and so it should be respected as such. And these are things that I wish I knew, you know. I, I came in here and I was like, close practice, what the heck is that? And, uh, you know, thankfully, I have never unknowingly engaged in close practices, knowingly or unknowingly. I have no interest in that. But, you know, that was a huge risk where I could have accidentally, unknowingly practiced something that was closed or appropriated cult a culture that, you know, is restricted to certain people. And so if I had this knowledge before, it would have been an extra layer of security to make sure I was doing practices that I was allowed to do. The next kind of example I have is the word magic spelled with a K at the end. This goes back to Aleister Crowley, who was a misogynistic and racist man. And based on my research, it's kind of like some people say it's bad. Some people say it's good. I personally avoid it altogether because, you know, whatever magic spelled with a C is, is, is fine, you know, like whatever. Um, but uh, yeah. That, that's another thing. I used to spell it with a K, thinking, okay, it doesn't matter. And, and people said that this differentiates it from like magician magic type thing. And so that's why I did it. But now I've fixed everything. I've changed all my episodes. I used to spell magic with a K, changed it with ending with a C. Because I just don't feel comfortable using a word where I don't know 100% its roots. And, you know, if it's really as rooted in this man's practices which are very very problematic in various ways um, I don't want any part of it now there are way more close practices that people can make dozens of podcast episodes to list I can't list them all I don't even know them all really still like I said I'm still learning but the important thing is to carefully research the practices you plan to engage in and make sure that they are open practices. So whenever I'm going to engage in a new practice or reach out to a deity in particular for a tarot reading, I always make sure that that deity is open and uh, not restricted to a group of individuals. Um, or, you know, if they are closed practices, make sure you belong to the group of people who practice them, right? So, and make sure, you know, um, that you have the knowledge and the resources like elders um, that can teach you these practices properly. And again, make sure you are a part of those groups and that you are allowed to do be initiated and such. And as always, ensure that you're practicing cultural appreciation, not appropriation in your craft. 
So you can, for example, you know, we acknowledge the, I acknowledge the land that I'm on. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm on the land of uh, Caldwell people. That's, you know, the Native American land that I live on. And, uh, you know, that is cultural appreciation. It's not appropriation to say that. That's the land I belong on. So, again, be sure and, uh, you know, make sure you're safe with that. Number two, speaking of research, you cannot just jump into a spell the first day you decide to be a witch. You can't just jump into, you know, um, deity work, especially with demons, right? Demons, you have to do your research for sure. Um, and be careful of your sources, you know, make sure they're credible sources, get books, credible books, ask for people's opinions on certain resources, um, there, are, there is a lot of misinformation both within and outside the pagan community. And plus different cultures have different interpretations of things. Like color magic is very much, um, it differs between cultures uh, with their interpretation of what certain colors mean. Um, research can help you figure out what interpretations fit your beliefs and your practices. And so be sure to do that. Always look at the sources when you can and fact check, you know, triple check with three different sources, four, five, ten, it doesn't matter as long as they are consistent. And just the note, you do not need to know everything all at once. I was so eager to learn and I wanted to know everything, getting all the knowledge, but it does get overwhelming. And research is a lifelong journey. We are never done learning, so please take your time with it. Don't put too much pressure on yourself. And when you make a mistake, acknowledge it and say, I'm still learning. I promise not to do this again. And, you know, let it be that. You know, start with one book at a time, one podcast at a time, one topic at a time. You know, you don't have to do everything all at once. Number three, you do not need to buy fancy tools to access magic. Magic is already within you. And sure, tools like crystals and tarot cards and incense can be handy in rituals and they can sharpen your practice, but all you really need is yourself. Okay, you are the witch. The magic that you practice is within you and it is more powerful than anything money can buy. Um, and so witches of all economic backgrounds have been practicing for centuries using the tools they have at hand. You can go outside and use a, a, a stick that you find on the ground and use that as a wand. Okay, you can go out and uh, you know, find flowers for your spells, you know? You do not need to buy anything. You do not need to own anything, you know? This is all within you. You can get what you need at thrift stores, make your tools from scratch. You don't have to use tools at all if that's not what you want, you know? You can just envision the candle burning and manifesting what you want. You can envision your spell jar. Visualization is a powerful, powerful tool. So you don't have to buy magic. And if you think of it from a crystal pagan perspective, the Holy Spirit, which is my personal conception of the source of my magic, it's within and around all of us, okay? And I don't need a tool to access that, and I don't need a church to access that, and I, you know, it's within me. The Holy Spirit is within me. These tools are there to enhance or intensify or catalyze your magic. So it can speed up the process. It can make it more intense, like more powerful, quote unquote. But again, if you want your spells to be more patient and take your time with it, you know, you can just use what's naturally within you. Number four, you do not have to follow correspondences in every spell or working you do. So you don't have to cleanse at every new moon. You can cleanse whenever, whenever you feel icky and like your space is being invaded, then, you know, cleanse then, you know? Correspondences are tools to amplify your intentions, but they don't make the intentions. And spells don't have to follow a recipe either. So make sure that you're resonating with the spells you do. You, you should know why you're using certain ingredients or doing certain things, not because, oh, the internet told me to, or, oh, this recipe told me to. 
You know, if you don't know why you're using an ingredient, then change up the spell so you do. You know, this has to resonate with you. This has to be something that you relate to. Number five, the label witch is not just for women. If you're male or non-binary or trans or gender non-conforming or anything else, you can still call yourself a witch. And you can use whatever label makes you feel comfortable as long as, again, it doesn't appropriate or insult another culture. Um, but starting off in my witchcraft journey, I got like dysphoria calling myself a witch. So I would just call myself a pagan. But now I've learned and I've grown and I kind of grown accustomed to the term witch. And uh, that's definitely helped knowing there are other male witches out there, right? Um, so definitely, you know, if you want to call yourself a witch, don't let your gender identity stop you. Um, you can definitely call yourself whatever you want, as long as it makes you comfortable. Number six, mundane over magic. Okay, <laughs> not every bad thing that happens to you is going to be the result of a hex or a curse or a lack of protection, wards or whatever. Sometimes life is going to get lifey. People will be people and uh, it's just a natural part of it. So always consider mundane causes, especially when it comes to your health. Please, please, please do not think that every time you get sick or you have a chronic condition, it's because somebody hexed you, like, you know? And it's not to say that uh, every medical thing you need, uh, you have needs you to be on meds or that you can't use holistic medicine. You absolutely can, okay? Holistic medicine is still medicine and still getting a medical like professional help to some extent but it just means that spells are sometimes not enough okay you there, there's not if you have a chronic health condition you were born with like a heart condition no spell is going to cure that okay you need to utilize outside sources like you know if you have a mental health issue therapy or medicine if you have a like physical health condition you know or even mental health condition medicine is you know used for that i'm on antidepressants and that doesn't mean i'm any less magical or that i don't trust my spirit team right i believe they gave me these tools these tools are here for a reason use them and please consider the mundane causes first before jumping to any other conclusion Number seven, there is so much more to divination than tarot and oracle cards. And that I did not know starting out my witchcraft journey. So you can find a divination method that works for you. The world is your oyster. Literally, there is so much divination you can do in nature using natural resources. And it's absolutely amazing. Okay, you don't even need to do divination at all to be a witch. Another thing, if I just pray or if I just admire nature if I run and dance in the rain that's being cleansed so you know I'm even just learning about it doing research and I could still call myself a witch because I'm learning these things and I love the moon and I admire the moon and you know I have a spirit team and you know but you don't need a spirit team by the way which is going to be my next point but still you know I also have a podcast episode on the different types of divination, so you can check that out. I will link it below, and uh, that way you can have m more ideas to kind of go off on. It doesn't give talk about them in like great, great detail, but it gives you a basic introduction on some of the basic divinations that people will sometimes practice. Number eight. You do not have to work with deities or spirits if you don't want to. Now, I do it because I want to. I do it because Yahweh and Asherah and Jesus have always been a part of my life. They have saved me time and time again. They brought me into recovery. They brought me into mental health programs. I believe all my blessings I have today are from them. And that is my personal belief. However, if you don't believe in a creator deity if you don't believe in any deities at all atheist witches do exist okay i'm putting it out there right now now you know atheist witches can exist and they are 100 percent valid so don't assume that people are going to work with deities in their craft 
be inclusive to them. I try my best, but because my podcast is all about my experiences, they are going to involve talking about deities and spirits. Um, but, you know, whenever, you know, I talk about a spell or anything like that, I try my best to be inclusive to atheist witches. So, like, not really dedicating it to a deity, but just, you know, in general, putting it out into the universe. Um, witchcraft does not in of itself require that you worship a deity or summon spirits. That is your choice, your decision. So please don't let anyone tell you otherwise. Number nine, there is no right way to practice witchcraft, okay? Witchcraft is not a one-size-fits-all. Your practice is your own. Do whatever works for you. You know, what works for one witch is not going to work for another. So don't let anyone else's uh, craft dictate yours. Everybody worships different deities. Again, some of them none at all. Everybody does different types of spells, used, uses different divination tools, celebrates different holidays, researches different things overall, has different beliefs. Um, so get rid of your self-doubt. Find ways to work with your natural skills and inclinations. So for example, I personally incorporate Bible verses in my spells and I love candle spells way more than spell jars. I don't really, you know, do any spells on like a regular basis, even a weekly basis or a monthly basis. And that's okay. You know, that's what works for me. That's what gives me, puts less pressure on me. And so you can do spells as regularly or irregularly as you want. You can practice your craft actively as often as you want. Um, you can do mundane things or just, you know, do big shebang spells things, you know. Uh, that doesn't matter, you know. And uh, so, yeah. Finally, number 10. Don't feel like you have to share everything about your path to others. It is okay to keep some parts of your practice secret or private. You are of no obligation to share anything about your practice if you don't want to. And in fact, I would encourage you to keep at least some parts of your practice to yourself and figure out what you want to share, if anything at all. Like, for example, in protection wards, it's recommended not to share the ingredients you're using and if you do leave some out don't tell all your ingredients because that makes it easier for other witches to break down your wards or cut through them um, that's an example but in, in general yeah you don't have to share about every spell you do you don't have to share about every deity you work with you don't have to share that you're a witch overall you don't have to share you know these things these you can keep private these things you can hold sacred okay so don't again don't let anybody tell you otherwise so that's all i got for this episode this is a relatively short one it has been a hectic month so i decided to pick a topic where um it's a little shorter episode but uh yeah so that's all i got for today Thank you guys so, so much for listening and for supporting. If you like this content, you can follow me on social media. That will be in my link tree below. You could also join my Discord server, Crystal Caverns. That'll be linked below. We accept witches up until the ages of 35, just for the safety of not having too many um, adult members with our minors, you know, interacting just for their safety. But uh, yeah, if you're 35 or under, you know, you can join our server. And uh, yeah, we'd love to have you. We accept witches of all walks of life. So you don't have to be a Christian witch. There are witches of all sorts of pantheons, atheist witches, you know, uh, Hellenistic witches, all sorts. So we'd love to have you consider joining. And if you have a podcast video idea in the link tree below, there is a Google form titled Video Ideas. Fill that out and I will do a podcast episode on your idea as soon as possible. Would love to hear from you guys and see what interests you. And finally, if you want to support me uh, in any way, you know, I um, 
I have my own divination reading business. You can book. That's going to be in the link tree below. Um, so you book using the Goldie uh, link and then you pay using PayPal. Uh, I would love uh, to, you know, support you guys and do a reading, whatever you need. Um, and it means a lot to me, anyone who supports my little shop, my small business. Thank you guys so much in advance. And I believe that is everything. Thank you guys so much for listening to my spiel. I love and appreciate each and every one of you. Blessed be everyone. Have a wonderful day, week, month, and year.